Last summer season, you probably thought to yourself, Oh my god, why is Mario so fucking cute? But have you ever wondered, why is Marin so cute? And why have we all unanimously decided that she's best girl? So without further ado, here is my 1000% scientific, fully peer-reviewed thesis on why Marin Kitagawa is quite possibly the best girl of our generation. See Garnt, you were kidding, but that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Although there are many contributing factors to this, like how adorably she's written, how charmingly she's acted, and how well she's animated, I think a great part of the reason why she's so appealing has a lot to do with her character design. I'm sure that many of you watching this video, myself included, had their first exposure to My Dress Up Darling through an image of Marin. Regardless of whether it was a YouTube thumbnail, fan art, the manga, or the doujins, it was something about the visual aspect of this character that struck us with an immediate desire to know more about them. But then, something hit me. Even though I was aware this was a relatively new character, something about her widespread appeal and rapidly growing popularity felt oddly nostalgic. As if I had experienced a similar phenomenon before, where everyone immediately fell in love with a character design. And I had, in 2018. It's easy to say that Zero Two was the best thing about Darling in the Franks. Not just in the way that she's characterized, but in the expert craftsmanship of her design. Zero Two has proved to be incredibly marketable since the show's debut, spawning figures, posters, clothing, cosplay, and fan art that continue to be made and sold now four years after the show's initial airing. Moreover, it seems that of all the characters in the series, four of them being main female characters with their own unique designs and personalities, only Zero Two seems to get merchandise made. In fact, the only reason I and I'm sure many of you even decided to watch Darling in the Franks was due to how she looked. But why? Best girl, the anime. A single anime girl who feels like they were perfectly engineered to be the ultimate life form. A waifu. Giga hits the nail right on the head here. These characters are literally manufactured. They're expertly crafted designs made exclusively for viewers to fall in love with them. But what are the choices that these designers make that assuredly make us fall head over heels for their creations? What makes Marin so special? At a glance, she may seem like your typical anime schoolgirl, but there are already certain semiotic tropes that hint to her personality. Her most defining factor being her waist-length blonde hair. Because people in Japan generally sport their natural hair color, black hair has become visually synonymous with the idea of the average everyman in the realm of anime. This is why self-insert characters like Kirito, Kimihito, and literally almost every isekai protagonist rock relatable raven hair. In contrast, blonde hair, aside from being used to represent foreigners, is often used as a visual signifier for someone with incredible confidence or naivete. Someone who sticks out and swims against the current of society. Think Naruto, for instance. These traits ring true for Marin, who is not only popular, confident, and naive, but also isn't like the rest of her classmates. She sticks out from the crowd for being an otaku, something she gets teased for as early as chapter one, with even her friends telling her that they don't understand her when she's talking about her interests. This is why she and Gojo find this immediate platonic attraction. They're both outcasts, brought together by the strings of- I'm gonna stop here before this becomes your average video essay, but look at how all this is conveyed through just the color of her hair! And that's not even the tip of the iceberg. We haven't even considered how it's styled. Marin wears her hair in bangs that extend past her eyebrows and stop midway through her eye line, while parting one side behind her ear. This isn't just done so that the audience can better read her emotions, though. Having full bangs could make her seem too prissy and prim, like how the Hime cut traditionally symbolizes Japanese royalty and ideals. Conversely, showing off her full forehead would look too bold, giving off the impression that Marin is big-headed or narcissistic. By giving her aspects of both a Hime cut and a cut that exposes her forehead, author Shinichi Fukuda is able to use this balance to make her seem youthful and respectable, while also giving her that little bit of an edge to make her down-to-earth and relatable. Another key aspect of Marian's design, and my personal favorite, are her big, expressive eyes. So large, in fact, that they take up about 30% of her face. 
The large size, paired with how close they are to her other features, such as her small simplified nose, triggers the part of our brains that correlates these facial proportions to that in infants. Since we're biologically conditioned to want to protect our offspring because we find them adorable, these facial proportions are often used in character design to immediately make the viewer think that something is cute. Her eyes are also purposefully almond-shaped, being much wider than they are tall. We generally regard these cat-like eyes as being more mature or sultry, which gives the character an air of playful mischief. Almond-shaped eyes also gives the author a lot of flexibility when it comes to conveying her emotions. Not only can they make her look flirtatious, but by rounding off the eyes and making them taller, they can give the appearance of youthful innocence or cuteness. Coincidentally, as I was wrapping up writing the script, I stumbled across a really good video by YouTuber Quo Studio that scientifically breaks down why we find certain eye shapes, particularly cat-like almond eyes, as generally more desirable and attractive. Generally, almond eyes are preferred in both men and women. Almond eyes typically have a tighter lower lip shape, supported by fat, muscle, and underlying bone structure. Without that support, you get a droopier, tired appearance with less eye upturn and other undesirable features. One of the characteristics that often accompany almond eyes is a downturned medial canthus, or that sharp inner corner of the eye. It's no surprise women try to accentuate this through eyeliner to get the illusory cat-like appearance. Maureen also has these striking magenta irises, which serve as the accent color, with it being used for the tips of her ombre hair. They're also illustrated as these iridescent galaxy eyes, a shoujo manga staple that when paired with her long black eyelashes help portray beauty and whimsy. Most anime girls tend to have slender body proportions, with almost disproportionately large heads on narrow shoulders, another visual allegory to infants, which is used in most instances to highlight the character's youth. Older or more masculine characters tend to have smaller heads and larger bodies. Marin's design seems to follow these conventions, as well as having much more feminine proportions. Her big head tapers into a small pointed chin, she has longer legs and a shorter torso, a very small waist with wide hips, and accessories, such as her constellation earrings, bracelets, and lipstick, which show that she's hip, trendy, and cares about her appearance. Her choker, on the other hand, reinforces aforementioned aspects of her design, such as her playfully mischievous cat-like nature, while also serving as a symbol for her femininity. This particular item looks to be a staple in every variation of her design, including her cosplay, implying that Fukuda intended for this symbol of femininity to be a constant of the character. Her main look, however, is her school uniform, which she wears in an unconventional way. This trope is one often seen in anime and manga, such as Jotaro and Josuke from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure customizing their Gakuran with chains and pins, or Matoi Ryuko from Kill la Kill wearing Senketsu as a stylized version of a traditional sailor uniform. In Marin's case, although not nearly as bombastic, she tries to make her otherwise bland school uniform look chic and fashionable. By tying the bottom of her shirt, she prevents it from looking too baggy and shapeless, accentuating her wide hips and the cinch of her small waist. She also leaves the collar of her shirt unbuttoned and the tie loose, giving her a casual, easy-going vibe. Her rolled-up sleeves, however, allow her to seem assertive, as they're a traditionally male symbol for a worker or someone who gets things done. The loose, round shapes that make up her clothing, when juxtaposed with her sharper physical features alongside her accessories, give the impression of a friendly and bubbly disposition, while also giving her the edge of an alternative punk girl. While she wears her skirt pretty conventionally, Marin doesn't wear any long socks or stockings, instead opting to show off her bare legs, giving the impression of self-confidence. Although at face value her design is very simple, it is littered with visual shorthands that immediately convey the fact that she's confident, beautiful, and feminine. The big galaxy eyes, hourglass proportions, long hair, and jewelry, just to name a few, all serve to convince your brain to accept this character as attractive. And clearly, all these symbols are doing an exemplary job. Now that we've broken down the aspects of her design that make her appealing, one can't help but wonder, how much does art style factor into appeal? Short answer? A lot. Take for example Claire Aoki from the series Gleipnir. At a surface level, she shares many visual similarities to Mari. In fact, I'd wager that if you showed your grandma an image of Marine, and then a few days later showed her an image of Claire, she would likely mistake them for the same character. Both are Japanese schoolgirls with similar uniforms, both have similar body types, and both have long blonde hair with bangs between their eyes. 
But unlike Marin, Claire didn't seem to make the same large splash within the cesspool of otaku degeneracy. You might say, well, perhaps Claire wasn't as sexualized as Marin, which would be a fair assumption, but an incorrect one, as Claire is put in much more overt and compromising positions throughout her series. So if it isn't necessarily sex appeal that distinguishes the popularity of the two, then what is? My theory is that the way in which they are illustrated is what sets the two apart, especially in their anime adaptations. Early on in the manga, much care is taken towards how the characters are illustrated. Claire has much more mature and detailed facial features, rendering her in a slightly more realistic style than she is drawn in as the series progresses. Over time, likely in order to meet deadlines, author Sun Takeda starts to illustrate his characters in a much looser style, paring down elements of Claire's character design to make her simpler to draw. This simpler design and rougher style is what was used as the basis for the designs of the anime adaptation which goes even further to omit details in order to make the show easier to animate. This is where I think the distinction lies between the two characters. While Studio Pine Jam ended up taking a peel away from the character, Cloverworks, a studio known for their near-movie quality animation, opts to adhere strictly to Shinichi Fukuda's already simplified art style. I'm breaking from the script here, I just had to say, Cloverworks is just the fetish studio to me. Like, these guys are the masters at fetishizing the human form. Like, bruh, look at this, bruh. Pine Jam's much simpler coloring and compositing work ends up feeling flat and lifeless by comparison. This could be any run-of-the-mill anime, while Cloverworks makes it a point for you to know that you're watching something special. As for comparing the manga art, I think what makes or breaks the characters is how much you can perceive through their expressions. While Claire seems to be drawn in the same alternating set of emotions, Fukuda takes great care in making Marian's expressions as vibrant and diverse as possible. By being able to interpret her emotions so easily, the audience is able to form a deeper connection with the character. You're never left to wonder what Marion is thinking. You know she has no ulterior motives because you as the audience knows exactly how she feels. As mentioned earlier, Fukuda draws Marion in a style very close to that of shoujo manga, which gives the series a gentle, feminine quality. The line work and in turn the characters feel delicate and prepossessing. Gleipnir's artwork, however, although incredibly beautiful in its own right, feels much more rugged and masculine, seeming much more in line with shonen or seinen manga art. Marin Kitagawa and the aforementioned Zero Two aren't the only characters to be a part of what I'm calling the best girl phenomenon either, where a character's appeal is so great that it makes them immensely popular. In recent history, we've had Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village, Rem from ReZero, 2B from Nier Automata, and more recently, Biken from Guilty Gear, just to name a few. Uh, um, hey, this is Editing Bay me here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just add these guys for posterity. All of them rival each other in their success, so surely when compared, you'd be able to see some sort of correlation between them. You might wonder, do they share any attributes with Marin? They sure do which I'm gonna try to run through without repeating myself too much, it's... it's gonna be tough. Take Zero Two for instance. She too has long waist-length hair with the color symbolic of her personality. Not to mention that she also has it cut into bangs with side locks that frame her face. In fact, bangs in general seem to be an extremely popular choice amongst anime character designers, and are often used to different effect to portray an aspect of the individual's personality. For instance, Rem from ReZero has bangs that cover one eye to make her look shy and bashful, while 2B's fringe is used to make her seem mysterious. More interestingly though is how side locks seem to be so prevalent in female anime hair designs. Like the Hime cut is for bangs, my theory is that the side locks are a holdover of the ancient Japanese tradition of Binsogi, a coming of age ceremony in which the hair around a woman's ears would be cut to cheek length when they turn 20. It's possible that these locks have become subconsciously synonymous with youth and femininity in Japanese culture, and have been modified and stylized to highlight these attributes in various designs. Much like Marin, everyone with the exception of Rem have eyes that are wider than they are tall. 
with varying degrees of canthal tilt, where the more upturned the corners of the eyes are, the more they give off a mischievous or seductive appearance. Some characters like Zero Two and Android 21 from Dragon Ball Fighters have upper eyelids that are drawn much flatter, which is often used in anime as a visual shorthand for anger, but in this case served to give them a more roguish, almost antagonistic disposition. In contrast, however, Rem's eyes are drawn to be much rounder and taller. Unlike her peers whose designs lead more towards attractive, Rem is supposed to come off as wholesomely cute. This is why round eyes are often used for mascot characters like Chopper from One Piece or Happy from Fairy Tale, as both are adorable characters that aren't meant to be sexualized. Rem is also given a much rounder face to highlight her youthfulness, and when compared side by side, she ends up looking younger than the other characters on this list, even though most of them are around the same age. Another common trend is to have eyes that contrast the character's hair and clothing to guide the viewer's eye to the area of greatest importance. Take this white screen for instance. Since everything is of equal value, your eye has no point of focus. You can freely look anywhere on this screen and not be attracted to any one spot in particular. But look at how that changes when I add just one point of contrast. By adding this small black dot, your eye is immediately brought to this area of interest. Similarly, by having the color of the irises be of opposite value to the rest of the character, your vision is guided to their face, putting it at your visual forefront and allowing you to read their expressions more easily. This can be seen on Marion's magenta against yellow or Zero Two's green against pink and red, with the red accents at the outer corners of her eyes helping to provide more immediate visual contrast, but also giving the suggestion of a flushed appearance. This effect isn't just achieved through hue either. As in Rem's design, it is accomplished through the difference in saturation between her eyes and dress. And on 2B, it is achieved through a difference in value. Placing importance on the face doesn't just stop here, however, as often the entire design is orchestrated to highlight this one key feature. Let's stick with 2B, whose light silver hair works in contrast with her dark black dress. This has an effect similar to seeing light at the end of a dark tunnel, serving to pull the viewer's eye to the area of lightest value. We can see the same effect accomplished through Chroma and Hue with Rei, Rem, Makima, and Baikin, whose hair is the most saturated part of their designs, while Asuka uses a different color within the same temperature range, orange, which we generally perceive as being lighter than red. Most of these characters also have body types that generally match that of Marin being slender with large heads and narrow shoulders. And although characters like Rei, Asuka, and 2B have breasts on the smaller end of the spectrum, it seems that most of the characters on this list share large busts that are almost disproportionate with their slenderness. Biken obviously taking the cake. Speaking of cake, all the characters mentioned seem to have designs that place emphasis on their main assets. 2B, for instance, wears thigh-high stockings and boots that are used to emphasize the long legs of the character design as a main feature, as well as bringing attention to her when her leotard is exposed. Meanwhile, Zero Two has light-colored bands that outline and bring attention to her anatomy. So to quickly recap, what are the most common visual attributes shared across these characters? We can easily say through comparison that they share bangs and or side locks, wide almond-shaped eyes, a close set of facial features, large tapered heads on small thin bodies, large womanly proportions, their face and eyes are used as a focal point, their personality and or occupation implied through their clothing and character design, and optionally an art style that complements the character. Now, are these eight observations the key to appealing character design? Maybe. At the end of the day, these are just observed patterns, and although they can give a good idea of the things that make a character design a hit, no one, not even the artists themselves, really know what it is that adds that extra bit of magic to a design. I do think this list has some legitimacy, however. The fact that these attributes find themselves shared across most of the characters in this small pool means that there has to be some sort of correlation between these observations and their popularity. The choices of what to include and what to omit within any particular design are always deliberate choices made by the artist, and what makes them good decisions is whether or not they're informed. Something as seemingly superficial as a character's eye shape or color palette or accessory can tell you a lot about a fictional being without them saying so much as a word. The things that make up a character, as well as the characters themselves, are symbols. And we can't understate the importance of these symbols when it comes to conveying the essence of a character. 
That's why, as a character designer, it's important to know what these semiotics mean so that we can use them to the best of our advantage. In the same way, you're immediately aware that Rem is meant to be a bashful maid, or that Biken is meant to be a badass samurai. You know immediately, from just a glance, that Mari was meant to be loved. Hey everyone, just wanted to thank you guys for watching till the end. I know this is probably a little different from the type of video that you're expecting from me, and I'll definitely be doing more standard tutorials in the near future, but I wanted to try out this sort of video essay style, and uh, I wanted to make this channel a place where not only do I teach people about how to draw art, but I also try to analyze art itself. So if you like this type of video and you want to see more about it, please tell me in the comments. And stay tuned for the standard tutorials as well. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.